Hello everyone, and welcome to my Coronation Street official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Next week on Coronation Street, Lauren Bolton receives a life-altering update as doctors finally give her excellent news concerning her son Frankie. Since her early birth earlier this year, her son has been in the hospital. This is because malevolent Joel Deering offered her medications that would induce an abortion as part of a scheme to permanently remove Lauren from her life. Frankie has struggled with health challenges ever since his birth, and last month, he experienced a seizure that terrified Lauren. Fortunately, he made it through, and in scenes that will run the following week, a doctor tells Lauren and her friend Max Turner that Frankie is doing well enough to be released the next month. Bobby Crawford assures Lauren that he and Max will be there to support her as she anticipates raising her son full-time. Bobby, in the meantime, tells Max that he still has feelings for Lauren and yearns to spend time with her. But next week, once Joel's body is found in a local river and the police launch a murder inquiry, things won't be looking good for Lauren. Joel was killed, according to Kit Green, who informs Lauren this when he visits the hospital. The post-mortem showed that Joel was dead before he entered the water. Is Lauren going to be charged with murder soon? What transpires following Joel Deering's passing in Weatherfield's biggest ever whodunit has been confirmed by Coronation Street. At the end of the previous month, just as his horrifying atrocities were about to be exposed, the perpetrator vanished from sight. As fans of the ITV soap opera are aware, after Joel was scheduled to appear in court for a number of his heinous acts, it was presumed he had committed suicide. He was identified as Lauren Bolton's secret boyfriend earlier this year when it was discovered that he was responsible for her disappearance and subsequent murder after it was claimed he attacked her with a chair leg. Fortunately, the teenager made it through and spent the summertime back in Weatherfield. But Joel soon confronted her, and fans learned the truth about their relationship through flashbacks, which revealed Joel had groomed Lauren and exchanged money for sex. Even though it was getting harder to prove Joel's grooming, D.S. Lisa Swain and Joel's ex-fiancé were able to convict Joel of purchasing the medications that caused Lauren to go into early labor with the intention of having their son, Frankie, miscarry. This was made possible by Betsy, Swain's daughter, being admitted. But watchers of Corey watched Joel fail to appear at his plea hearing at the end of last month, and an arrest warrant was issued for him. It was thought Joel may commit himself after sending money to Lauren and his ex-wife Emily. However, viewers watched Kit Green during Monday night's episode of Corey, following Swain's removal from Joel's case, and PC Craig Tinker examining security camera footage from a train station parking lot where they first spotted Joel and later his father, Gus, near a locker. Kit pulled Gus aside for interrogation, demanding information from the three boys who were the only ones at the riverbank to notice a body floating in the water. Craig came up to Kit and Swain and said they had located Joel's body. While Lisa ended up telling folks in the Rovers, Kit proceeded to share the news to Dee Dee and Lauren at the hospital. Later, Kit was seen calling Lauren back from the hospital, informing her that they were now looking into a murder investigation because the postmortem showed Joel was dead before he entered the river. According to Corey, a massive Weatherfield whodunit is currently underway in search of the murderer. In the upcoming weeks, viewers will be able to piece together the mystery as we follow the police as they attempt to solve one of the biggest whodunits in the history of the street thanks to a number of thrilling flashbacks. As the official detective now in charge of the case, Kit starts his inquiry by telling Lauren and Dee Dee, the two women Joel's violence and lying threatened to ruin, but he was killed. Joel was not a popular man, and as the mystery grows, these stylized flashbacks will show us exactly how many people are in the picture as we relive the evening of September 27, the night he vanished. On our very own crime wall photo, fans will see the suspects highlighted as some beloved Coronation Street characters come under suspicion. The first two to come to light this week are Mason Radcliffe, the bad boy bully from the wrong side of town who has been showing signs of improvement recently, and Ronnie, the uncle of Joel's wronged fiancé D.D. Watchers will witness the first dramatic flashback in Wednesday's episode as we travel back to that fateful night when Joel vanished and follow the events that transpired. As the evidence grows, Kit will be tugged in many different directions, while Swain, who was forced to stand back from the case, will pursue her own investigations. But as the story develops and takes many more unexpected turns, who exactly killed Joel, and how long will it take Kit and Lisa to apprehend the murderer? After his departure from Coronation Street, Callum Lill's co-star Shanique Sterling Brown paid respect, leaving the actor crying. 
Even though viewers find it hard to accept that the disturbed and malevolent Joel Deering is truly gone, the actor was spotted bowing out of the ITV serial opera. When it was discovered that the spotless solicitor was concealing a dark secret, Corey's devoted fanbase loved Callum and hated Joel. He was identified as Lauren Bolton's secret boyfriend earlier this year when it was discovered that he was responsible for her disappearance and subsequent murder after it was claimed he attacked her with a chair leg. Fortunately, the teenager made it through and spent the summertime back in Weatherfield. But Joel soon confronted her, and fans learned the truth about their relationship through flashbacks, which revealed Joel had groomed Lauren and exchanged money for sex. Even though it was getting harder to prove Joel's grooming, DS Lisa Swain and Joel's ex fiance were able to convict Joel of purchasing the medications that caused Lauren to go into early labor with the intention of having their son, Frankie, miscarry. This was made possible by Betsy, Swain's daughter, being admitted. But watchers of Corey watched Joel fail to appear at his plea hearing at the end of last month, and an arrest warrant was issued for him. It was thought Joel may commit himself after sending money to Lauren and his ex wife Emily. However, viewers watched Kit Green on Monday night's episode of Corey, following Swain's removal from Joel's investigation, and PC Craig Tinker examining security camera footage from a train station parking lot where they first spotted Joel and later his father, Gus, near a locker. Kit pulled Gus aside for interrogation, demanding information from the three boys who were the only ones at the riverbank to notice a body floating in the water. Craig was the one who first told Kit and Swain about Joel's body being found. Kit then told Lauren that the post-mortem showed Joel was dead before he entered the river, and as a result, they were looking into a possible murder. As the biggest ever whodunit on Corey gets underway, Shanique, who plays DD, moved to social media to honor her co-star Callum, confirming that he has formally left the serial opera after 13 months. The actress shared a video of the two, confirming that the first tape was taken during the filming of their last nice scene together. A series of further clips then followed, revealing the two getting acquainted behind the scenes as they worked on their narrative. Shanique added, R.I.P. Joel Deering, next to the post. You were very horrible, but I'm really thankful that you showed up in the shape of one of my closest friends. A year of antics, non-stop drinking, practicing only to become sidetracked, and you hauling all of my belongings. We've laughed a lot more than we've wept, well, I've sobbed, but we've also been thrilled and cranky. I would not have wanted to share the story of Dee Dee and Joel with anyone else. Thank you, Cal, for the best year ever. Okay, that's enough politeness for now, we can't afford for your head to grow any larger. Over and out, she said as she concluded. Callum was fast to reply, adding, May 8, face with tears emojis, this set me right off. Numerous wonderful memories, love emoji. I will really miss you. Even having to carry your belongings everywhere will be missed. Along with several emojis of sobbing faces, he posted Shanique's video on his Instagram story and commented, I'm not crying, you're crying.